Hello everyone, my name is Ajay and today I'm going to demonstrate how to run GNS3 on Azure Cloud VMs. There's another option also available, EvenG, and when you check the official website, this is not supported. So when you are trying to do a simulation and trying to install the EvenG on the VMs, which is hosted on Azure or maybe on the AWS, it will fail because those VMs, they are already virtualized. And officially on EvenG website, you can check this is not supported officially on Azure, not even supported officially on AWS Cloud. If you have your dedicated machine where you can run the virtualization, please go ahead and use EvenG. So today's session, we are only going to discuss about GNS3, how to install it. So let's get started. Let's first build the topology. In my topology, I'm going to have Windows machine installed on Azure. And from there, I'm going to run GNS3 client. And another machine which I'm going to host is going to be the Linux Ubuntu, where I'm going to run GNS3 as a server. So this is my client. This is my server. And both the machines I'm going to host in the same VNet, in the same subnet, so they don't have any disability to be configured. However, you can assign public IP addresses. Since I need to do the RDP, so I'm going to assign a public IP address here on Windows machine. Since this Windows machine is going to talk to Linux, not necessary you are going to talk to Linux machine over the internet. So you're going to have the private IP addresses. One private IP address will be here on the Windows machine. Second private IP will be here on Linux machine and those can talk to each other. You can, if you have any machine which is sitting on the internet, you can install those Linux client on that machine and you can directly connect your Linux box for that, you need to assign a public IP address here as well. In my topology, Windows machine is going to have the public IP address and you're going to talk to Linux machine. I'm not going to use a public IP address which is assigned to the Linux. So I have created two machines. One is going to be the client, one is going to be the server. My client machine, which you can see, they're part of the same resource group. They are VMs. They both are located in East US. The status is running. One machine is Windows, another machine is Linux. Windows machine is D4SV3. And this is a public IP address which is assigned to Windows machine. And then you have DS, D8SV3, which is your server and you're going to run Ubuntu, and this is a public IP address which gets assigned. However, I, as I said, there's a public IP address, but I'm not going to use it, though you can use it. That's up to you. Now let's take a look on the Windows VM configuration. Since I'm going to use this Windows machine to install the GNS3 client only, I don't need a server with high CPU or high RAM. So I'm just simply going to choose vCPU 4. This is a standard T4 SV3 machine and it has got RAM which is going to be a 16 GB. This is running Windows 11. My public IP address is this and the private IP address which gets assigned by default, it's going to be the first IP address, which is start from 4.4. My virtual network is created by default. DNS is not configured. I believe that's all we need here. Now let's take a look on the Linux VM configuration. So First time when you create any of the machine, in my case, I created the Windows 11. There was one VNet which got 
created by defaults. So next time when you are creating Linux machine, make sure you are mentioning that this Linux box is going to be the part of the same VNet so that it can get the same IP address from the same, not the same, but the next IP address on the same range. In this case, we can see 10.5.0.4 was assigned to the Windows machine and the next IP, which is going to be the 5, which get assigned to Linux box. This is my public IP address. This is my D8SV3 machine. Make sure since you're going to run a lot of appliances here, you choose the resources very carefully. I have chosen 8 CPU and 32 RAM in this case. And it is running Ubuntu with 18.04 Gen 2. That's all you need here. In the next step, you need to download client on the Windows machine. So go to the gns3.com. It will ask for username and credential. If you don't have one, please create it so that it allow you to download it. Download the GNS3, install it, go with all the default options. You get all these PuTTY and uh, VNC and uh, Nmap, Wireshark, all those comes with the package. Install it and finish the installation. Once your installation is finished on the client side, log into Linux machine and let's try to make it as a server. So you can see I'm logged in from Windows machine so that I'm using the private IP address. 10.5.0.5 and it, it is telling that I'm running Ubuntu 11.06.6.04.6 here. Now the next thing you need to do create a temporary folder. Go for super user rights and uh, download image from here. So all these commands are mentioned here. You can do exactly the same steps while installing the GNS3. Run the next command, which is mentioned here. And it will take 10 to 15 minutes to download all the packages. At last, you are going to get a success matches that GNS3 installed with success. Now let's verify what is the IP address here on the Linux machine. So you can run fconfig ets0 and we can see the IP address assigned to the snake is 10.5.0.5. Now it's time to connect client to server. So we need to go to the Windows machine and from there you can launch the GNS3 software what you installed as a client. Go to the help and from there go to the setup wizard. Now it is going to ask you three options basically. One, run appliance in virtual machine, run this appliance on the local computer, and run it on the remote server. Since we know we are trying to connect from our client to server, so it is going to be the remote server installation. So you need to choose run appliance on a remote server and hit next. Now, once you launch sort of wizard, you need to mention the host. Since we are connecting Windows machine to Linux over the private network, an IP is going to be 10.5.0.5. So that is the IP mentioned here. This is the default port 3080 TCP, which I'm not going to change it. So leave it as a default. By default, it comes as an enable authentication. Since there's no authentication needed, uncheck this box and hit next. In the next, it is going to tell you the server type has been configured. Please see the summary for setting below. So this is the host where I'm going to connect on the port 3080 without any authentication. Hit the finish button. Since our server and client port are ready, so on the client side on the GNS3, you need to create project first before you can start any of the activity. I wanted to do a lab for Nexus 9K. You can see this option here. Once you click, you can see the new template. So what we are going to do here, we are going to create 
or a template or going to set up a 9k device with the help of this new template so the options we are getting here after clicking the new template install and appliance from the gns3 server that is a recommended thing so i will leave it here and hit next button since i mentioned i wanted to do install a 9k appliance so you can see here the option firewall router switches so under the switches i see nx os virtual 9k so click here and hit install after hitting the next install the appliance on the main server and click next choose cameo system x8364 bit click next now you can see it is giving you option to run multiple version of 9Ks and for that whatever the version you choose you need to download at least two of the, these two files one is going to be the .ft extension and qcow2 file and then hit next before hitting the next here those two downloaded files need to be imported or download download it let's see how it looks like so on .ft, when you click on this file, since I uploaded it, so it is telling you found on SRV, which is a remote server. What you can do here, you either can hit the download, it will be redirected you to the website from where you can download it. If you already have it, you can import it from here. So since I already downloaded, I imported this file. Similarly, the same thing you need to do, you go to the second file and the same option comes. Once these two files are in system, these three things are going to get converted into the green like this found on SRP. Once all these three things are in green, then only hit the next button. Now we can see on my screen that this NXOS 9K this is coming as an appliance here and we are ready to build the topology in my topology i'm going to use that 9k as a spine and leaf switches so you can drag and drop from here and uh, then you need to go to the connector and connect all these appliances to each other now it's time to start the appliance you can do the right click here on the device and hit the start button for final verification, we can see the switch has been started. The one thing I wanted to mention here, maybe sometimes the switch doesn't start the way you want. So it might go to the loader kind of prompt. So from there, you can mention the boot command and mention the win file, which you can see from command dir that will take care of boot related stuff so on my screen you can see i successfully installed a 9k device on the gns3 which is hosted on azure cloud thank you for watching i will see you in the next video